Season 5 of Formula E starts this weekend. As the series has been given a revamp with the introduction of a new Gen 2 car and a twiddle with the rules, now seems as good a time as any to give an introduction to this fun and extremely curious racing series. There are some that seem to have a reactive distaste to Formula E, as they approach it from a Formula 1 mindset and see just slower cars and hear the absence of that petrol growl. But Formula E is a whole different game and plays out in a whole different way, going out of its way to bring new ideas to the table. Let's start with the cars. Everybody uses the same Gen 2 chassis, which is designed to be stylish and streamlined. The wheels are covered to massively reduce the way spinning wheels can throw chaos and inefficiency into the airflow around the car. There's no real rear or front wing, only minor elements instead. Now remember, the power delivery from electric engines is constantly being developed and pushed forward, so in order to get the most out of these cutting edge power units, these cars need to be as slippery as possible. Instead, the cars have massive diffusers, focusing more on capturing downforce from the underfloor. This means the cars are much less sensitive to dirty air and can run with noses much closer to tails than their Formula 1 cousins. This is useful as they're often competing on tight, twisty circuits without the acres of open runoff seen in other sports. In these scenarios, it also helps that the cars don't have those traditional single-seater front wings, as the races tend to be full of a bit of pushing and shoving between the barriers, and you certainly don't want your nose popping off on lap one. The electric power units are capped at a maximum power output of 250 kilowatts, which is about the equivalent of 335 brake horsepower. But depending on which session they're running in and what bonus scenarios are activated, the power unit may be limited to different maximum levels, as we'll soon see. So a Formula E car has a top speed of about 280 km an hour, but is torquey as all hell and can get up to 100 km an hour in easily under 3 seconds. So they tend to be a lot of fun, very lively and pretty racy. So say you fancy watching a Formula E race to find out what it's all about. How does this all work then? What will you expect to see when you tune in? Well, a Formula E event is run across a single day. Sometimes there'll be a double header when two races are run back to back in the same city one day after the other, but each day is treated as a separate event. A driver can only use two full sets of tyres across the event. There are no wet and dry tyres, just the one type of treaded Michelin tyre to cover all weather types. Except like ice or a blizzard or, you know, like a monsoon, I guess. But those conditions haven't come up yet. It all starts with a couple of practice sessions, a 45 minute first practice and a 30 minute second practice. The cars can run at the full 250 kilowatts throughout these practices. We then move to qualifying. Qualifying is run in a grouped format with the drivers arranged into four groups of five or six defined by their championship position, or for race one, their previous year's championship position. Drivers can also use all 250 kilowatts of power in this session. The whole session lasts an hour and the groups go out one at a time, with each group getting just six minutes to set the fastest lap time possible. Once each group session has been completed and all the times have been set, everyone from P7 downwards has their times locked in and their grid positions set. The top six, however, get to continue on to the Super Pole Shootout. This is basically a six person, single lap qualifying event with each driver going out in turn to set a fastest lap. These times will set up the top six on the grid and the driver who gets pole position also gets a handy three points towards their championship. Next comes the race. As the cars don't want to waste energy and are designed such that they don't need to warm up the parts and tyres to a certain optimum temperature, there is no warm up lap. Instead, the cars line up a little way back from the grid and simply drive to their slots to start the race. Interestingly, the races are time limited. So instead of the drivers having to complete a set number of laps to finish the race, the races are capped at 45 minutes, plus one lap. So when the 45 minutes are up, the first driver to cross the line starts the final lap and the race to the chequered flag. The interesting part here is that the teams go into the race unsure of exactly how many laps and therefore what the total distance of a race will run. I mean, they'll have a decent idea, but say if the lap times are about a minute and a half, you can squeeze in 30 laps plus that extra lap. But if the race runs slightly faster than expected, the race may run for one more lap. This could mean a couple more miles of race distance, and in a race where you're managing your battery power, this could certainly throw a few drivers for a loop. There are no scheduled pit stops, and no external recharging is allowed during the race. Though the cars will constantly be regenerating power throughout the race, through braking and such, just like in Formula 1. There's a lot to think about during the race, and drivers will need to know in advance just how long the race looks to run, if they're going to strategize speed, power, and energy efficiently. So let's talk about this electric power unit and how it's used during the race. Under normal race conditions, the power is limited to 200 kilowatts, which is about 270-ish horsepower. So most of the time during the race, the cars will be running with this upper limit of power. Now there are two ways of increasing the amount of available power, fan boost and attack mode. Fan boost is a system that gives the driver an extra 25 kilowatts of power for about five seconds. 
So if they're trying to pass the car in front, being able to press a button and give themselves an extra boost of energy deployment may be exactly what they need to get the move done. Not every driver will get to use fan boost though, in fact only 5 drivers in each race will get this ability, and which drivers get given this small advantage are voted on by the audience, in a period starting a few days before the race and ending 15 minutes after the race has started. They can only use it once, and only after the 22 minute mark. So it's a minor, one-off trick up their sleeves, but potentially a race changing one. The other way drivers can unlock power from their car is attack mode. This has been casually dubbed Mario Kart mode, but really it's F-Zero mode, and I'm frankly furious about this misnomer. Attack mode is available to all drivers, and to activate it drivers have to pass through a certain designated area of the track away from the racing line. This is of course a slight disadvantage at first, but having passed through this area, drivers will have an extra 25 kilowatts of power available to them for a decent amount of time. The amount of time attack mode lasts, and the number of times it can be triggered in a race, will not be revealed ahead of the race, so teams can't crunch a strategy together too quickly. In Formula E, they want you to do a lot of thinking on the fly. And yes, you can double up by using attack mode and fan boost together for a combined 50 extra kilowatts of power, bringing the car up to its full 250 kilowatt potential. Expect to see a lot of different strategies at play here, especially while they're figuring it out. But how on earth can we tell which of these power modes a car is in? Well, the Formula E car's halo is equipped with a band of light that signals the car's power mode. Red lights indicate attack mode, and purple lights show fan boost is active, and both colours together means the driver has used both in a devastating double attack. At the race finish, drivers are awarded the standard amount of FIA points, as seen in F1 and plenty of other series, and on top of this, the driver with the fastest lap who finished inside the top 10 will get an extra point. So there really is a lot to play for. Formula E races are fun, short and lively, with strategies and race shapes very different to those found in Formula 1. It's not Formula 1, nor trying to be Formula 1. Instead, it's doing some pretty incredible things at the forefront of technology and trying a new twist on the racing formula. And at just 45 minutes, it's definitely worth a shot.